parents to be sensitive, have eyes everywhere, in front, at the back, at the side, everywhere, even your legs, let there be eyes there. Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Thank you very much for supporting me on this channel. So today I want to talk about uh, something very, very interesting and you're going to learn a lot from it. So it's like uh, an experience I had when I was little. That's what I want to share with you. So uh, my mom, I'm still going to talk about uh, stay in that town I mentioned in the first video. So my mom was the head postmistress. So we're living in the quarters, you know, in that compound. So we, there was the um, the main post office on the on the right, on, yeah, on the right, and then on the left was the quarters. So we're living there. She had a lot of subordinates who were loyal and very nice to her because she was just a good woman. So you know, would come back from school, would uh, go to uh, my my brother's nanny and then get him from there, play with him for a while. Sometimes we'll go to the nanny and the woman will not allow us to carry him. Huh? God bless the woman. So she was, um, she didn't have a child of her own. She was, uh, so just because the agreement was for money till evening, this woman would not allow us to carry her brother. When we, were, we would just come back from school and go back and go to the woman's house and say, we want to carry our brother. <laughs> and then she would say, she would chase us away. <laughs> Sometimes she would shout at the top of her voice <laughs> for people to hear and, you know, they would then, you know, caution us to stay away. So sometimes we'll just go to her and beg, you know, like, please, we want to play with him, with him and then she would just release him to us. And there were other days that she would allow us to play with him just in front of her house. <laughs> you must just disappear and leave her child. <laughs> you know, that woman... They were even calling her Iyadapo and telling you. So they called her by my brother's name. And, and then mommy would have closed at the time. They would have closed the front door, you know, for customers to come in. But they would still be busy doing a lot of... So we would then go through the back door. Then once we get to uh, her office, she would tell us, no, 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 no. You, should, you can play around, you can play around. Please don't disturb me. So we'll just step out of her office and then we'll play, you know, just within the... The building. Particular day, I entered the restroom, you know, and it was very close to my mommy's office. And then one of the staff just entered with me, a man. And I was just so uncomfortable, like, what? So he said, eh, I should touch. <laughs> you know what he said, I should touch. I was so scared. Well, I don't know this thing with women, I mean, with children. When things like that happen to you, you don't mention it to your parent. You know, now I'm asking myself, I was just asking myself recently, like, why didn't I even mention it to, to mommy? Number one, maybe you look at the relationship with they had, and you think, oh, I don't want to spoil this relationship. Or you look at it, that at the end of the day, it's not like anything happened, they didn't do anything to you, you know? I don't know, but so like now, I encourage my children to say anything. Even if anybody says anything to you that you're not comfortable with, you must mention it when you get home. So I didn't tell my mom. And then he, the, another person, another male staff, you know, did similar thing another day. Then it got to a time that they were charging mommy too much for that apartment. So we had to move. So we went to Akure for, I think, a holiday or maybe a weekend. And by the time we were coming back, you know, she had already made arrangements to leave the place. She thought they would have finished before we would return. So by the time we got back, they had not finished. So we had to move somewhere temporarily before we then moved to that building. He sent me to go and buy bread. To go and buy, was it bread? I don't know, I remember. To go and buy something for him. So I took the money from him. I bought it. He gave me the money outside. So when I came back, I, you know, off, I gave him what he sent me to buy. Outside too. But he said, oh, Please go and drop it in my room. So I went to his room and then dropped it. And by the time I was coming out, he had already got into the door. And then he, he, you know, he forced his way into the room. And I just said, oh, I'm stepping out, I'm going out. And he said, wait, wait, wait. And then before I knew it, he was, you know, touching me in a very awkward way. And I told him, I will shout. And then, and then he left, you know, he, he, he left me alone and then I came out. But that was the last time I ever ran around for anybody. 
because I at that point I didn't at the point I didn't trust anybody again. So now I didn't feel comfortable in my mommy's office. I didn't feel comfortable in my in the house we were. So but thank God that we didn't stay there for long before we left and moved to um before we left and moved to um that new building I told you and we were the only people, the only family living there. So there was any there was nobody to run away from. And then my mom's office I you know I just thought I just lost interest in going there anyway. So so even that building I told you was in front of the nanny's house where we would we normally played with my brother and then we would return him to the woman. There was a brother, I can't remember his name, is it I think his name was Taddy. He was a big brother who we were just little children. And then he would always call me my wife. Well, it didn't make any sense to me, but so I was just good afternoon, sir, and then we would go. So one particular day he was sitting down and just and we sat down to waiting for Mama Dapo to release her brother to us. And we just felt like it would sit there for hours. And she kept seeing us that maybe she would just have compassion on us and bring her brother to us. <laughs> so we sat there and then he put his head on my lap. And I was I was just looking at him like, what's this? He just said, oh, I should just let him be like that. You know. So I said, I kept having, you know, experiences like that. From there to... Uh, going to visit people, like going to visit my grandma in another town, uh, people around, you know, these are things I started experiencing so early in life. So even my father's friend, my father's friend, I can't even mention the name because because he, he might be watching this video, I don't know, you know, was uh, nice to us in the family, he would come around, you know, he would greet us, he would take myself and my sister, out with his children, not like into anywhere to buy us anything anyway, or maybe he was going to buy something for his family. And then he would tell us to go with him, we'll accompany him, he would buy whatever he wanted to buy, and then we'll go back home. So he would drop us before going to his own house because our house, you know, you will, you will get to our house before you get to his. So that's, you know, he continued like that, and everybody was comfortable around him. Daddy, 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 daddy. That's what we're calling him until one day. He told myself and my sister to follow him. My sister was not out, was not uh, around. No, she was. I think she was doing something for uh, for her mom. Uh, yeah, so she couldn't follow anyway. So she, he just said, "Oh, Shola, you are here. Oh, yeah, let's go." My first name is Uluwa Shola. So he said, ah, "Let's go." And then I just opted into the car. You know, listen to the car. And, you know, with excitement. Like, but that particular day, he didn't have any of his own child, uh, children in the car because. Normal day, he would have one of his children in the car and then pick one or two of us too and then we'll go. So I just felt comfortable and then, you know, I followed him. It was in the night. And it was, you know, we're driving down. We had not even gone far. We had gone far from the house anyway, but we had not gone like halfway gone, you know, to where we're going. We're going to look at the, if you're familiar with her, we we're going to head my hand. I didn't even know what he wanted to do. He held my hand and I was even still smiling, you know, like daddy and daughter kind of trip. <laughs> So kind of relationship. So he just pulled my hand to close to him and then he landed my hand on my hand on something. And by the time I noticed in one second, every my brain processed everything in less than a minute. I just knew it was his private part, his penis. And I opened the door on motion. I opened the door of the car, my side, and I told him I was going to jump out. So he, he tried to, he said, sorry, wait, yeah. so he, he slowed down a bit and then I came out of the car. It wasn't totally, I had not totally stopped the car or halted the car, no. I just ran off the, I just dropped out of the car and then I started running as far as my legs could carry me. I started running. I ran and ran and ran and ran till I got to a street before my street. That was when I come down to take in some breath and then I walked back home. But I didn't tell anybody. I told my sister, okay, I, mean, I told her. Then for a long time, I didn't tell any, I didn't tell any other person until much later when I told my mom. That man was was sick. Do you know when it transferred him out of that town, of that out of Akure, and I, uh, I think then I'd uh, finished my. I was in I, I yeah I was in higher institution at the time. At that time, I was in higher institution. He was still telling me to come and visit him in that new town where he was transferred to. Knowing that his family was not there, they were still in Akure. So what would I be doing with you in a... I didn't go, of course. So, you know, there are people like that on my path, you know, in life. 
that I just want to advise girls that you might look at it like, oh, I'm sexy or I'm attractive. People, yeah, people, people love me. They are drawn to me. I'm, I'm loved by everybody. Everybody wants to be my my friend. Everybody wants to have something to do with me. No. Today I know it's the plan of the devil to destroy my life. Because if at 41, I'm going to be 42 by January. If at that I'm still like this, this tiny girl. <laughs> Imagine what I looked like at this time that you know I'm talking about. At age, it's age less than 12. I mean, at eight, then at 10, at maybe 12, at whatever. Before 16, I'd experienced so, so many experiences I had. I'd had so many experiences. What was it about me at the time? Even when I was in I, I mean, higher institution, what was it about me? Not like I was busty or big bum bum. Or, there was nothing special about my appearance. I'm wonderfully and beautifully made like that. I'm beautiful, but I'm saying there's nothing that you say, oh, it's so uh, excessively big that is drawing attention to you. No. Even in church we, we attended, there was a married man. He would be beside his wife like this. When we are passing the the uh, bas it wasn't basket, you know this thing that they use in Anglican, like a sack with this wooden angel. We pass it for offering. So I was in offering department. This man would do like this to my to my my palm, you know, trying to drop it. his offering beside his wife. He would still do like this. Then he would be monitoring when I would step out. The moment I if I, that one, I don't know. <laughs> the moment I stepped out of the church like this, he would follow. He would meet me on the uh, the driveway or maybe the car park or something. He would just meet me up there. He'd say, where are you going? I said, I want to go and eat myself. And then he would say, hey, you this girl, hey, I like you. There was a time I was still in GSS3 or SS1. He said, hey, I even thought you are more mature now. This one, this one, I love you. I want to shake you. I would say, I would shout and then he would leave me. This man waited till when I got to higher institution. He even came to my school and announced that. He even know I can't, till tomorrow, I can't even tell how he knew I was in that place. But of course, the world, you know, the whole of Akure is even a small place anyway, not to talk of maybe Joka. <laughs> so he knew maybe from someone in church that I was in that school, but he didn't know where I was, where I lived. He just got to the school and mentioned my name. And maybe luckily for him, by the time he asked like three, four, five people, one person maybe knew somebody who knew somebody. And then he got to the front of my my hostel and then he talked to someone and the person said, oh, I think I know the girl because I was a fellowship girl in Nigeria. I was in the ministry on campus, and maybe because of that, and I was in this group, Roots of David, where we're singing, and I don't know, maybe one of those, you know, just uh, uh, made me a bit known among some people, and then they came to call me, that your dad is looking for you. I was shocked to my bones, like, how? So he said we should go to a bar, you know, a rosabi or whatever they call it. You know, like a joint, like a bar, whatever. And I told him no. He said, I even thought you're more mature now. You are in higher institution. You're still behaving like a child. I told him I'm not going. So he gave me some souvenirs to share with my friends. You know, everybody that helped him, you know, to to locate my room, my my hostel, or to at least finally reach out, get me to come out. He gave them gifts, some umbrellas, some this, some that. He gave some cooler, you know, all the souvenirs from his company. I didn't follow him. So I look at all those experiences, some even with my mates. It's the devil. Run as far as your legs can carry you. It's the plan of the devil to destroy you. So if you're a young lady and you're hearing me now and you are in this, you're experiencing this presently in your life where everybody around you just wants to have a thing with you. Eh? If it's uncle, if it's your daddy's friend, your, your brother's friends, people from your school, people in the church, everywhere you just get to. Somebody must just be attracted to you. Everybody just want to have you. Just want to have a thing with you. I won't go beyond that. Don't see it as see as I'm attracted. People are attracted to me. Oh, I'm so lovely. I'm so this. Forget about it. It's the plan of the devil. It's the plan of the devil to destroy your life because he knows the plan of God for when he's waiting for you in the future. Run as far as your legs can carry you. Do not be deceived. They have no good plan for you. If you are experiencing this presently, talk to people who can guide you, can counsel you. Do not fall prey of all these plans of the devil. It's just cheap plan of the devil. Do not fall prey. I pray that God will help you. Run. When Joseph, uh, when Potiphar's uh, wife held on to Joseph's clothes, he let it go. Oh, oh, that's a 
I ran. If so, that's what you should do. Do not be deceived, brother. This one too, he likes me. Your sister, this one like me. Now lie you. There's even one who was my sister's uh, former boyfriend, who said, "Oh, he loved me." Did, 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 loved me. I, I didn't know he was. I told him, "You're just you, 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 you are my sister's uh, friend, boyfriend." I said, "They are not dating again." I said, "So you were dating my sister, now you want to be dating?" I said, "I can't do it, though. I cannot." You know, that guy almost put me in trouble. But thank God that I flee. It's every. They are everywhere. Whatever is in your in you that is drawing evil people like that to you is the plan of the devil. Don't think it's because you're sexy, you're loving, you're forget about it. It's the plan of the devil to destroy your life. So be wise. And parents, parents to be sensitive, have eyes everywhere. In front, at the back, at the side, everywhere. Even your legs, let there be high there. So that even if you're on the table and people are doing things to your children, even under the table, so if you can sense it. Parents, be very, very sensitive. I remember when we were young, how our parents used to look at us, our mothers in particular. That's the way you're looking at me. Eh? You're on your period, they will look at you somehow. You are not on your period, they, will, they are always looking. When they look at you like this, they are analyzing. <laughs> Be very sensitive as parents. And it's better for your children to complain that they don't go out a lot than for them to go out to places they, where you know they are not, they won't be safe. These days that people will go visiting or sleep over somewhere and the daddy in the house will be sleeping with your girl. Be very careful. The Lord will help us. He will help us as parents. And as young girls, God will help you. He said the, the way of a youth is uh, slippery. Abby. <laughs> God will help you. You can help yourself. That's why you have to know God now. Don't wait till when you get or grow old and you have problems in your career or you have problems in marriage and you start calling on to God that you did not involve in the beginning. This is the best time to know God. This stage when you are still young. Know him. Know how he speaks to you. So that when you need direction about things in life and you are praying to him, you will already be familiar with how he speaks to you. Let him guide your steps in life. And it will be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for listening. doing this. If you enjoy it and you like to see more of this, please like and share. Like and share and subscribe. God bless you. Till next time. Bye.